Hello, good afternoon, morning, evening. If you don't know what river dance is, go like Google it up and then, then you'll laugh at this cartoon. So we're going to finish off here with gene regulation stuff in terms of stuff that is not regulation at the transcription level, which most of it is. So here's this, I could make the entire AP test out of this diagram. So here is what we've been looking at. What's it take to transcribe a gene? We are still and will continue to be talking about the central dogma because what we just talked about was what does it take to use DNA to make RNA, okay? Now we're going to talk about a couple other things. More specifically, we're going to talk about this part. What's it take to use the DNA in the first place? Well, it turns out it's got to be not tied up in knots because how is DNA used? It's unzipped, right? If it's tied up in knots, like this is trying to show, it can't be unzipped. And then we'll go down to this part. Okay, we made this messenger RNA. Are we going to use it forever? Or are we going to use it even just a little bit? There are different ways where even after the gene is used, made of DNA, the RNA can be shut off here. And then there's more on-off switches down here that we'll get to. <clears throat> so here's the first one. These are these changes that are above the level of the gene. In other words, we didn't change the gene. These are not mutations, right? But they can affect gene expression reversible. This is in the syllabus, so this might be, you know, on-off kind of thing. And they might modify DNA or those proteins that are stuck to DNA, which is something else they'll change in the next syllabus because... They never ask you to know what histones are. They never mentioned them before. And then they throw it in here and they'll realize that someday, which is why they should have asked me to write this. So anyway, we talked about this and we talked about more detail than this ask because this is all they ask you to do to know that changes called epigenetic ones can affect gene expression reversibly, modifying either this or that. Okay, that means they can tell you a story about methyl groups and they can tell you that methyl groups keep DNA all coiled up so that it can't be unzipped and used and expect you to know the rest, right? Or they can tell you that these proteins can have something attached to them, not to the DNA, but to them, right? And that kind of loosens it up and causes it to be able to be used. So if you remember, we called these kind of factors like um, uh, acetyl groups, that's the one, I don't see it on this thing, but that's the one we specifically said, acetyl groups can attach to histones and cause that gene to be able to be used, turn it on. Methyl groups are usually an off switch. You have all other kind of things that can be involved here, and you have um, kind of things that can cause these groups to be attached or taken off, reversible including diet, aging, different kinds of other chemicals, different kinds of stuff. Okay, so here we have the idea. They could tell you a story about twins. They have exactly the same DNA, right, uh, minus the random mutation that could happen. And how can they become different? Well, they can become different because one might have this gene turned on and that gene turned off, and that's how they become different. So, here we also have the idea that we talked about this before with this same picture how different cells come to be is also often due to different epigenetic factors turning on genes in this cell but not that cell for instance so the idea part of the idea is for the most part these cells all have the same set of genes but it's using different ones that make them different that use can be different at the transcription level or here at the epigenetic level. That's what we're saying here. Okay, so now we have this one little simple sentence. Certain small RNAs can have roles in regulating gene expression. And that is all the detail they go into. And regulation always means the same thing. Turn on or off. We talked about these. Do you remember? This was slicer and dicer that could chop up this messenger RNA, right? So now we are post-transcriptional. Transcription already happened, right? But now this RNA might get chopped up. Or 
these little RNAs, these small RNAs, might jump on this and not chop it up, but just block a ribosome. Either way, this is called RNA interference because these are always off switches. So here I just, we talked about this and this, and you can read this if you want. They might tell you a story like this. This is how this kind of regulation seems to evolve, have evolved, is as a defense mechanism from RNA from viruses uh, that this, this mechanism, slicer and dicer, can chop up. And then it became co-opted, so to speak, as a regulatory mechanism, a common regula regulatory mechanism that causes, again, everything from cells, one type of cell being different from another type, which is also a big part of development, um, you know, from an embryo to a, to a big grown-up organism. So near here to finish off now, we come back to this diagram and say, boy, I could make the whole test out of this again because this has all the signaling stuff, which is a huge part of regulation, right? It's not part we talked about in this unit because we started with DNA and started with its genes being used, but that always is triggered by some kind of signal, right? Then we went through the stuff we talked about and we're again at the central dogma. We have DNA being used to make RNA, which means this can be shut off or turned on, plus or minus, right? Inhibited or activated. Then, if we get past that part, on the way for RNA making a protein, we have other switches like that RNA interference that we talked about, for instance, just now. That RNA can get chopped up so this doesn't happen or does happen. Activate, inhibit. And then when we have an active protein, the active protein is causes the cells to do things. And that's like phenotypes. That's like traits, right? Finishing the central dogma. Remember back when we talked about enzymes in unit two, enzymes themselves can be part of a regulatory system that has nothing to do with DNA, but just one of the end products of that enzyme inhibits it allosterically and shuts it off all kinds of regulatory things have um have evolved so that's the that's about that one i got one more genetic engineering to do um so i uh, sitting there and um little piggy walks into the bar has 15 beers like big piggy but this is a little piggy and uh uh bartender says do you want to you know, need to know where the restroom is he goes no no i'm the little piggy that goes wee 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 all the way home that, that is absolute solid platinum, if not gold.